Hi, and thank you for joining me for a week of inspirational math talking about numbers and how they're used in every day. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, good morning, my name is Colin Fritz and uh, I'm the Director of Automotive Services at AMA or the Alberta Motor Association. And most people think of AMA as probably roadside. Is that the scope of what AMA is or is there anything more to it? Uh, no, AMA is much larger. We're um, the largest Alberta based membership organization. So we service about a million members across the province. Um, roadside is kind of our bread and butter and what we're known for, but we're much larger than that. We have an insurance company, a driver education school. We have a large rewards or affinity program uh, that we offer to our members and as well as insurance and some other um, non member facing business units. Well, as we talk about numbers and about roadside, uh, mm -hmm. how has the current market kind of impacted uh, the business model for AMA? Uh, yeah, so within roadside and, and within our business unit in automotive services, um, you know, we're rescuing a member every 60 seconds in the province of Alberta. And we do that with both of our, our own employees and what we call our fleet. Um, but we also use contractors. And so when we look at the current market environments, there are a bunch of things putting pressure on how we are able to deliver service. So an example would be um, inflation, pushing salaries and wages, which is a huge operating expense for any business and figuring out the balance in what salaries are fair to market. But another example is even fuel prices. And, and so when we have contracted service providers driving large trucks that are consuming fuel and, you know, 20 liters per 100 kilometers or sometimes 10, sometimes eight. Um, what's, what we're seeing is with large fuel prices, it's putting more pressure on their cost structure. So just even as recent as the last couple of days, we're looking at our subsidies that we provide for fuel and having to make almost emergency adjustments um, and making sure that we're fairly compensating people for the fuel consumption so that they can continue to be available and uh, be there for our members when they are broken down, wherever that might be. You know, you mentioned the uh, loyalty program and uh, the need for customer satisfaction. How do you use data and numbers to kind of uh, improve satisfaction? Right, and th and that's a great question because we we see ourselves as a data driven organization, and we're quite data rich. We have these great relationships with our members. You know, we don't look at it as a customer. People choose to be a part of us and we really build these long term loyal relationships with our members. But we're also cognizant of the fact that we want to deliver on that member experience because we're really a customer driven and we we call customers members a member driven organization. And so what we do is a big part of what we do is we measure our satisfaction through all different types of interactions. So roadside's a great example. Um, we survey our members after you receive a roadside assistance event. And what we find is our return rate sits at around 20%. And what we do is we get this data that ties right back to the interaction level. So how satisfied are you with AMA? Great. But how satisfied are you with the driver, with the time, with the call taker that happened all through that interaction? And we use those to benchmark and look for opportunities to improve the level of service, whether it's a customer service one, but it's even around time. Time is our biggest integer here at Roadside um, because when you're broken down at the side of the road, the thing you care about most is when are you going to be here? And so we use the customer interactions to try and understand, are we meeting the expectation? And at times when I can't necessarily get to you faster, how am I keeping you informed? Because what we know statistically when we go to our market research group and try and measure how important satisfaction, our satisfaction is highly driven on response time as well as how informed you are uh, throughout that interaction. So while I might not be able to get to your campsite with your RV that's broken down in 30 minutes, but if, if I'm continually updating you and keeping you informed along the way, we see a higher SAT, that satisfaction rate actually directly correlates to renewal rates, which is really the bread and butter of how people come in and continue to be members with us. Yeah, well, the the need for, uh, you know, ha happy members and staying uh, loyal and keeping their membership is obviously important. And I know that there are obviously adverse weather conditions that probably impact your organization quite heavily. Um, so how do you keep customers happy in those more challenging scenarios? Right. <laughs> and so, using data and numbers to kind of improve that ability to offer services. 
Right. So what we do is, um, you know, we have a really, um, I'd say a pretty robust analytics group that helps support us in day to day operations. So we look at it as a harmony of how do we bring our numbers forward so our business leaders can actually drive business results, right? So we look at daily dashboards and a great example is during, you know, your most recent winter event in Alberta. It's like emergency services for us, but it happens every year. And so we continue to use the data to figure out how do we provide better service, but also what's happening in the moment. Like, how long are we waiting? Where are pockets of problem areas? Because we know, again, if time is our biggest integer, how are we driving down our overall wait times? And and we look at wait time instead of looking at averages, like how long is average? We look at percentage completed within. We look at it more as a service level. So we're trying to get to 80% of calls within 40 minutes, because what we know is that between 45 minutes and an hour has the highest correlation to um, SAT scores or satisfaction scores that sit in the eight nines and tens out of tens, which again relate back to this overall, um, this overall level of renewal. But the countermeasure is is that we're balancing this idea of responding responding quicker with with money, and the and the economics of it is is that in theory for a million members, if I had a million tow trucks following you around, I'll always get to you in one second. But it's financially unsustainable. So what we're always trying to balance is this financial sustainability as an organization, because as AMA, we're a not-for-profit organization. So we're always trying to balance because every time our roadside expense has to go up, it puts market pressure on what we can charge for membership fees into the market. And so these are sort of the, the economic realities uh, that we're always dealing with and trying to figure out is um, we still have this core mission of rescuing people at roadside and how do we do that in the most efficient way and continue to find ways to improve and, and data helps create some of these linkages or provide opportunities for us to see where we can improve on that service when you say we analyze that data is there someone with a cal graphing calculator punching in button <laughs> who's how, how are you doing all this fairly complicated i'm sure it's fairly complicated analytics uh, yeah, uh, we don't have any TI-83 pluses, uh, but we use um, we use a lot of things. So for us, uh, you know, we have data streams and our data, we're, we're data rich is what we call ourselves. So even from a roadside interaction, if you think about it, I have a timestamp in one interaction, I have a timestamp of every step along the way. So I know when you called us, I know when you ended the phone call, I know when our driver got it, I know when he went on route, I know when he went on location, I know when he completed the location. So we have all of these stamps to kind of give us a line of code for an interaction, but on a much larger scale, we can then start to aggregate that together to understand global experience. Now, when we talk about who are those people? Um, really, we have this driven analytics group that are using a multitude of tools to help us drive some of these reporting. So there's simplistic ones like Excel where we can do very basic level um, reports. But when we start getting into dashboards, we're using tools like Microsoft, uh, Microsoft BI uh, or Business Intelligence um, we also utilize here machine learning. So we have an actual machine learning team where we're using AI to help drive and look at multiple rows of data to provide, basically kick out outliers. So an example is, is in roadside, there's, there's fraud risk as part of our organization where people could potentially be selling their membership and using it out for a business use and potentially driving all of these cost concerns for us. So we've actually built a machine learning tool where it aggregates all of our data around usage and then kicks out who are high use, what looks weird, and it kicks out these high use cases for us to then help isolate and identify potential uses of fraud or misuse so that we can re-educate our members to say what's the actual use of this membership and uh, so that we can also understand maybe people that um, don't fit our value set and and probably don't necessarily belong with our membership. Mm. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of um, a lot of visual representations, a lot of just, um, you know, percentages, uh, just like lots of different things coming together to make a decision. And I, it sounds like it's it's quite uh, fascinating just to see see a decision come together with so much rich information. Uh, so with that, I'll thank you for your time and I'll ask a final question. Uh, what is your favorite part of working at AMA? Um, 
honestly, it's a values driven organization. So I think what happens is, is when you work here, you start to realize that uh, this isn't a, um, an enterprise that only cares about money. It cares about people. And our mission at AMA is that we protect the things our members care about most. And when we frame that around how we do business, it really starts to align with, with what you're passionate about and really helping people. And that becomes the mantra of working at this organization that you do great things to help the consumer base and uh, we continue to innovate and push ourselves, which to me creates an exciting workplace.